So I've been working in this area since about 2000. And about six or seven months ago, I happened to take a trip to St. Louis because I'd never been to St. Louis. And uh, one of the sites that I visited was a U.S. historical site, which is Grant's home. So uh, before and after the Civil War, when he was in the general, he had a home outside of St. Louis, and it's now a, a formal U.S. historical site. And I went there, and I was just flipping through all this literature they have about Grant, and I came across that March 1st, 1885 New York Times article. And I started reading it. And of course, it doesn't say oral cancer until very late in the article. And the description of the pain that he had associated with the cancer was literally what's taken us the last 10 years. And I was thinking, if I'd made the same, made this same trip in 2000, I'd know everything that has taken us so long to, to learn. The other really interesting thing to me is that when Grant developed cancer, he moved to New York. And uh, he was treated about two blocks from where I work in New York. Yeah. What's most telling about that article um, and what's really helpful in terms of understanding oral facial cancer pain is that it is function induced. Meaning, if I have a patient sitting in the office who's not talking, eating, drinking, or swallowing, and ask them, what's your pain? And I tell them about the visual analog scale, they'll say about a two. But when they say two, and their tongue hits their tooth, they're like, oh! And it's that way for about a minute or so. Well, that's the way their whole day is. And then, of course, if we surgically remove the cancer, and we get this from Grant's article, because the cocaine, which, as I mentioned, is a nonspecific uh, sodium channel antagonist. It inhibits the primary afferent, so the patient doesn't have pain. That tells us the pain's being generated in the cancer microenvironment. And if we remove that cancer, the pain goes away. The problem is that so many patients suffer a recurrence where the cancers come back, and then they have that problem. Um, the other really interesting thing is when you get into the real details of Grant's cancer, the first time he noticed pain was when he was sitting on the porch with his wife and he bit into a pear and he said, a bee just stung me. He thought there was a bee on the pear and that it caused severe pain. Of course, people in the pain field, and, and we are as well, are very interested in bee and snake venoms. But I think, you know, was it the citric acid in the pear that then activated maybe the trip V channel on primary afferents? So it's a, it's a very interesting story. They, they tried a number of things on Grant in terms of mouthwashes and uh, actually trying to do different things to the cancer, certain things he could eat or drink, and of course none of them worked. The only thing that worked was the, was the local anesthetic cocaine, which fortunate for him was discovered in 1885.